The power of what you do and when you do it, more importantly, I should say the frequency with which you do it, in other words, how consistent you are with what you are doing, possibly matters more than what you're doing itself. And I think that applies to be true with fitness, with nutrition. It's more about finding a rhythm in order to be so consistent, so continuous throughout the entire journey that it just becomes an identity, a part of who you are and all that you know to be. And so you're going to do it regardless of what life circumstances throw you their way. And so therefore, it's no longer this extreme far to the left, far to the right, all in or all out type approach. It's just building consistency that yields these massive, massive shifts and results in such a short period of time because it's not the extreme. And my guest today, Doug Schlank, who is a amazing, amazing business owner, um, owns a uh, fitness studio, but also runs an amazing academy for uh, men, fathers specifically, understands that, teaches that, practices that. And yet what's cool is what we talked about today, a lot of is his journey doing this thing called 75 hard, which I'll let him explain, but it's kind of going in the opposite direction and yet still touching on the same things. So super cool episode for you to navigate how important it is to be consistent, how it is to honor your word, how important it is to do what you say you're going to do. But more importantly than any of that, is how to go about setting up the structure for that to actually happen. So really fun episode. Without further ado, let's get it rocking and rolling. Doug Schlank, welcome to the podcast, my friend. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here on this Friday. Absolutely, absolutely. Cold one for you. I already saw you were out there doing a workout in 21 degrees. Yeah, it's, uh, it, I guess we're, we skipped fall and went to winter here in the Midwest and there's snow expected. We've already hit snow once, and uh, we've got snow expected on Monday. So is what it is. Yeah. No, I love that. And I think that's the phrase, right? Like, that's kind of how you live. It is what it is. Like, you just face it, and you just do it. Um, but I saw you're doing this thing called 75 hard. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. F- fill us in on that, because I feel like it's going to open up some philosophies and stuff for sure as we kind of dive yeah. into some other really cool so things. I, I'm, I'm not going to take credit for creating it. Uh, another gentleman... Um, who's actually here locally in town, who has a podcast, who's a very successful entrepreneur, owns a first form supplement company um, and supplement superstores. And he has the MF CEO podcast. Uh, anyway, he's a local guy. Um, I, I, I loosely know him. I know his brother a little bit better. I know a few of the other people involved in the company a little bit better. So anyway, He's a, he's a big motivator and uh, he's had this challenge going around 75 hard. So what it is, is there's five rules you have to live by for 75 days. And there's, there's no buy-in, there's no accountability. It's just you. If you want to do it, you do it. It's, it's free to anybody. You can just Google it and search it. It's, I, I challenge you to do it because here's the thing. I've done multiple, like you, 90-day challenges, okay? Yeah. And this one, as much as it's centered around the physicality of things, um, what I've come to find out is that the mental side in the transformation mentally is completely not what I expected. It's, it's so much more. So here's the five habits. You have to uh, read 10 pages of some sort of self-development or motivational book. Okay. No big deal. It's kind of part of my life anyway. All right. We read a lot. Sure. Uh, two, drink a gallon of water. Again, no big deal. Kind of already had that in place. So I'm kind of checking these boxes off the list as I'm reading what the challenge is, okay? Um, this, is, this is all daily, correct? This is daily, every single day. Okay. okay? Uh, take a progress pic. All right, I'm not real big on selfies, but I can do that as part of requirement. It takes, what, a second? So take a progress pic every day for 75 days. Uh, follow a diet, any kind of diet, but that diet can't involve any kind of cheating. And that's a topic we could even discuss during this. What is cheating? But, um, you know, no cheat meals and each individual knows this and no alcohol. Okay. Yeah. None whatsoever. Zero zilch. Nothing. And then the fifth habit is you have to work out every day. Cool. No big deal. I do that anyway. But you have to work out twice a day for 45 minutes total. Okay. Each workout, 45 minutes. Wow. One One has to be outside. Oh, now I see why you're outside in 21 degree weather. (laughs) So in order to get it done, you've got to do 45 minutes outside and it can be anything. It can be a walk. It could be walking your dog, walking with your spouse. It could be um, a rucksack. It could be technically even be take an 
a stationary bike or a rower outside and do it outside for 45 minutes. Sure. Sure. Anything. That's the cool part about this is you're open to whatever parameters you want to put into play for your workouts, your training, whatever you deem that to be. Yeah. But what you start to find, and I really realized this probably at about day, oh, 17 is working out twice a day takes its toll. Yeah, that's brutal. And really brutal. Understanding yourself and how to undulate the intensity is, is big. So I started to realize, you know, I, I can't do this. Like every Tuesday, Wednesday, I felt like I was breaking down. Yeah, we're not well, young. <laughs> we've no, we've not, put our bodies through either. stuff and... Yeah. yeah. You know, we're, we're right there with most of our clients trying to eat right. as gracefully as possible. Right. So the, the lesson is, you know, how do I undulate the intensity and still kind of quote unquote, do what needs to be done and, and complete the, the workouts. And again, the parameters are set by me. So, um, you know, yoga is a workout. Yep. Good for recovery. So that's what I did. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. I have to do two workouts. One is to be outside. So I would walk outside for 45 minutes. I would, uh, a couple times I've walked on a treadmill inside for the other 45 minutes. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. It's whatever I deem. But the big thing is, is there's been a few times where the days, you know, things were thrown at me that I wasn't ready for. Didn't sure. expect cut out some of the time that I needed to complete this stuff. And the thought dawned on me, I'm done. I'm checking out of this challenge. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to call it quits because I do not want to go outside right now. It's nine o'clock. I'm tired. I don't want to go for a walk. Yeah. And what I found is as much as I hated that, it, it was more than accountability than, okay, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to, I'm not going to quit because I just don't do that. Um, I've got other people I'm doing it with. So yeah. I'm not going to let them down. And I've posted enough on social media about it that I'm not going, I, I've got leverage in the game, yeah, so to speak, even though I didn't pay anything to do this. I yeah. took it upon myself. Um, I'm just going to do it because I said I would. It's interesting because like everything within this really is what gives people the tools to be able to change and make a big shift. One is it's, it really is simple. You know, uh, easy, no, not by any means. And it never is, right? But it's like, it's simple enough to understand from A to Z exactly what needs to be done. But two, there's a lot of autonomy. You can flex and flow with whatever actually needs to happen. Three, there's nourishment, mental nourishment from the reading aspect and the autonomy to choose whatever it needs to be and the flex of how to do it. But also the nourishment of fueling your body with a gallon of water, right? Which can be really hard for a lot of people as, as I'm sure you've seen, um, yeah. you know, thankfully for us, it's just a part of life. But beyond that, the nourishment of being outdoors. And I think, you know, it, it'd be one thing for, and I'm not sure if this, you know, the, the creator is, is a active meditator and, and, does different spiritual things the way that you and I like to try and embark on to, you know, calm the, the central nervous system and bring us back to center and stuff. But being outdoors and just that change of environment and just what it does to regulate your breath and your mind and seeing trees and whatever, uh, it, it is a form of active meditation. And so it's, it's so brilliant in its cohesiveness. Um, and it's just long enough where some of these habits are going to stick. It's past the 66 day mark, but it's not so far that yeah. it seems unachievable. Um, so I, I like it. The, and that's the thing that I really, it, it's, I, I've seen it in the background on social media, people tagging it, hashtag 75 hard, this and that. I don't see many people finishing it. True. Actually, uh, one of my other friends, um, this is way back in the day, we were both Starbucks store managers together and I saw her doing it. And, uh, and I was like, this is on like day seven or eight. And I just messaged her and I was like, Hey, I haven't seen anyone finish this yet. So I'm rooting for you to fail because <laughs> that might be the motivation you need. Cause everyone else does. So you might as well right. be like everyone else. And she was like, right. I love that. Yeah. And what was cool is like, you know, 45 days in, she's like, Hey, I think I'm close to a pull up. What advice do you have? Right. And so it started giving her some, some like coaching cues and writing some programs by the end of 75 days, not only did she actually complete it. And the only other person besides you that, you know, I'm assuming you're going to complete it. Cause I know who, how you are. Yeah. Um, but she did, a, she, now. Yeah, she did a full pull up and I'm like, man, like 
the things you learn or discover along a journey like that, that you didn't even set out to start to do is what makes this so cool. The part that's really helped me is, you know, if you, if you ask anybody who's not working out and hasn't spent time in a gym, say, Hey, uh, starting tomorrow for the next 75 days, you need to spend 90 minutes of your day working out. Yeah. That's completely overwhelming because most people that we come across in the world of fitness or development, the number one thing is I just don't have time. I'm too busy. Sure. So I easily could have put that excuse in play, but now what it's made me do is I'm a better planner. I'm making use of my time a lot better. I'm making use of my time, not only work related and training related, but time with my family. Yeah. Because I don't want to shorten that time that I already have with my kids when they get off school. And when my wife, we get together in the evenings, when the kids go to bed. I don't want that to be discounted because, oh, I got to go do this thing for this challenge that I'm not paying for. And there's no benefit, quote, you know, no tangible benefit. Right. You know, that's, that would be complete bullshit and it'd be without integrity of everything that I coach my, you know, the people in my programs for, I'd be giving that up just for my own personal vanity, really. Yeah. So it's yeah, maybe that, that, that's where you're separating. It's not driven by ego by any means. It's right. driven by literally looking to improve in every area. Cause you're always, I mean, I've known you a long time and been in mastermind with you for a long time. And you seriously are one of the most, organized, pulling back, systematically thinking about things and trying to implement things in the simplest forms, like people that I know. So that that says says a lot. Right. I think that's what it, it, why it appealed to me because it looks so simple on, on the outside looking in until you get into it and start to realize, okay, um, when I eat lunch, I'll watch TV. That's like my downtime. Well, that would spawn into 15 to 20 minutes when I'm done with my lunch, still watching TV. Yeah. And it's, you know, I eat lunch at two 30 in the afternoon. There's nothing that awesome on TV. <laughs> so now I, instead I'll read. So I'll yeah. knock out my 10 pages. I'm supposed to read. Um, well I'll, that, and then instead of that other 20 minutes where I just waste watching TV, well, I'll go outside now. Yeah. Or I'll start to, I'll start to train. That's 20 minutes earlier that I didn't have, which then, you know, I'd always find, kind of finish lunch, finish watching that TV and say, okay, the kids will be home in like 25, 30 minutes. Cool. I'll start kind of organizing the house around, you know, doing those types of things, prepping for them getting home or meditate. Now it's like, well, now boom, there's that block. There's 45 minutes. Yeah. What am I going to do? Create content. I can get another workout in. What needs to be done to keep this rolling? Yeah. The efficiency is just really, really increased. Um, and the amount of things I've gotten done business wise now has, I'm kind of amazed. I'm actually leaving town later today and taking a break with uh, the family. We're going out to a, a cabin in the woods. And as an entrepreneur, and you, I'm sure you deal with this and uh, many others have, it's hard for us to stop. Totally. It's hard for us to think that, boy, have I really earned a break? Do I deserve this? There's so many, because there's always stuff to do. But I really kind of reflected this morning after I worked out and thought, hell yeah, I deserve a break. I'll create a membership site in the last 90, 90 days that have like, it's got like 16 hours of content in it that didn't, wow. you know? So it's, it, the challenge has really helped me start to minimize wasting and any of time, any time yeah. that I have. And I'm getting more done. And now I'm getting to the end of the day and now I've got all of this capacity to do other things that aren't even included in business or family or, um, you know, the, the challenge itself. It's interesting. Cause it, it, I mean, it is demanding the total time that it takes on a daily basis. Um, but it sounds like the biggest tool that it gave you out of everything, which as we know, is the biggest tool of change and transformation overall is awareness. Right. You know, like uh, the, the phrase that I think we've heard and said a million times is awareness precedes change. And you're seeing now with a whole new lens, all of these different opportunities, which, a struggle is the opportunity, right? Like you mentioned, I don't have time for this. And, and you weren't saying yeah. you per se, right? But in general, that's the story we like to tell ourselves. And now you're saying like, wow, but if I shift this, I have all this opportunity for time <laughs> and right. opportunities to do things. So I think it's something that everybody just needs to kind of hear. Um, and, and ultimately, like we all need to have some kind of challenge that we step into or set for ourselves uh, in order to, to do that. 
Um, but I think one of the biggest things you mentioned was having that leverage of people have seen that you're going to do it. And so that keeps you from quitting and we all need a coach or leverage, uh, in, in some regard, you know, for sure. So love to going to hear on how someone can implement that, you know, or what your thoughts are. Yeah. I mean, in terms of leverage, I think that that's huge. I think people discount how important that is. And I, I was definitely someone who raised, you know, my, by my parents, my family, Hey, speak when spoken to don't ask for attention, just do what's required. So I think it's hard for a lot of people if they take on a, you know, a transformational program to change their life in terms of their, you know, whether it be weight loss or strength gains or just being healthier in general to tell other people, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this thing and I want to lose a hundred pounds or, you know, whatever the case be, because they're embarrassed by that. Yeah. Because I don't want to call attention to myself. I don't want people to know I'm doing this because then what if I do fail? What if I do, what if this turns out like every other time I tried something like this, but I'd have you consider how and have the listeners consider, consider, you know, I create leverage because I, I I'm trying to create a, um, you know, a tribe of people that want to follow somebody who is willing to do more than what's required a lot of times. Okay. Cause I enjoy doing that. And I was definitely somebody who, hell, I didn't have a Facebook account till three years after I opened my gym. <laughs> I, have one. I didn't do anything with it. Cause I didn't, I don't need that. I don't need to tell people what I'm doing. If they can't see it for themselves then, but you know, the leverage of social media is huge, but the leverage within your own circle is huge as well. Mm. So even if I didn't have social media and, and, and people counting on me and a couple of these accountability groups of that, I just of friends who are doing the 75 hard with me, you know, I would tell my wife, Hey, I'm doing this. Help me out. Keep me accountable. I don't want to fail you. I'd let my kids know, you know, my kids are eight and six. Um, they just think dad's always moving and doing stuff. <laughs> so you know, if I am ever sitting, it's interesting. My, my daughter is very uh, intuitive. I, I, we, we share a lot of the same in, intuitiveness about, um, how should we say, observing people. And there's been times where she's caught me watching TV. And even though I've already worked out for the day, she's come up to me and goes, um, Dad, what, you don't work out anymore? Because it was at a time that I used to work out a lot. And she would come join me because I've got some things here at home that we do. Um, and even though I already did it, I could easily tell her, I already worked out today. I I, but she reminded me that was leverage. Yeah. That, yeah, I really don't need to be sitting here doing this. There's something definitely more productive I could be doing yeah. right now. But there's got to be a way to build leverage, whether that is, and everybody's different, whether that is financially or emotionally, um, there has to be some level of accountability. Yep. So whether you're paying a coach, uh, whether you are paying, I mean, it could be a friend say, Hey, I'm doing this. If I don't check in with you and tell you I hit my macros, um, I'm going to give you a $10 gift card to Starbucks every time I don't do this. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you probably find a friend who would take you up on that. I mean, yeah, before sure. you know it, they'd probably be texting you. Hey, did you do X, Y, Z today? because I want my free 10 bucks to Starbucks or whatever the case may be. Yeah, so exactly. There's a lot of ways to create leverage, um, especially for those who don't, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I just don't have the discipline that you have, Doug. I hear that a lot. And I'm innately lazy. You are too. It's in our <laughs> DNA to be lazy. Okay. Right. And we all take advantage of it. We have downtime and we have lazy time. But when I've got leverage and I've got people counting on me, to show up and because I think there's a lot to be said for being a, a, a person or a man of my word. Um, God, I just think of if there's one person that read a post that, Hey, I'm doing this challenge or I'm doing X or I'm going to try to do this, or I'm going to get back to you and send you this information and I don't do it. And I've disappointed that person, whether they're invested in me or not, I think long term, if I ever want to try to create goodwill, with somebody, that person who I let down or disappointed, it's going to be like, he's full of shit. Yeah. You're just going to be another person right. that has let them down. So, and another reason why 
they shouldn't continue or fight to, right. to be that. And that, I mean, that's powerful, man. I mean, you're obviously seeing the ripple effects that are far greater than you. I mean, it's, uh, you're living the Maya Angelou quote, right? Like people forget what you say, they'll forget what you do, and they never forget how you made them feel. And it's the feeling right. of Doug is consistent. Doug does honor his word um, that, that drives the action of the doing. So yeah. therefore it drives what you say. So it's that quote, but flipped in reverse. Um, and, and I like to say how you live is how you lead. And so like it's, it's teaching and that's probably why you have so don't, many. Don't get it twisted. Members, I you know? really don't. I don't, my, all my actions are not driven by just random people who follow me on social media. No, it's but I'm a, talking about your family, right? Like you, you, you brought that up, you know, hundred percent that, you know, my kids are at a, a, a very, well, kids are always at a, a crucial age of learning. Yeah. I was about so, to call you out if you didn't correct that. <laughs> yeah. But this is, this is a, a time that I'm trying to instill, um, integrity and honesty with my kids because I am expecting more of them given their age you know, yeah. the requirements of how they perform in school, how they show up as teammates with the sports they play, uh, how they show up as a, you know, as a contributing part of this family in our household and what's required of them. And not to cut you off, but I, I think your words are so freaking and spot on and powerful, right? How they show up is right. the effort. You're, you're not tying it to the outcome, right? Like, but it's the effort and how you show up. And then what, you know, even if you didn't get the perfect grade or you didn't hit the lift or you didn't, whatever, it's not about that. It's how you show up. It's how it's the effort, which is going to yield ultimately like who you become. So it's an identity thing. I mean, so spot on. I just had to highlight those words because I yeah. think so often we get caught up and, oh, you have to complete the 75 hard or you have to, you know, lose the weight. And so then we have all this fear about not doing it. So then we like usually in some form, try and preserve the former identity so that we don't do that thing because we don't want that. So, I mean, sorry to cut you off, man, but it was just so, no, no. so powerful. It needed to be highlighted, like how you show up. I mean, that's, right. that's everything. That's identity. That's a, that's who I'm showing up for really. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you coach people, I coach people. If I put something out there, I'm going to do it and I don't show up. It's going to like, well, Doug didn't do it. He didn't show, he didn't finish that. So I know he's asking me to do this and we're working on these goals, but you know, if he doesn't do it, why do I have to do it? I mean, that's, that makes me nauseous to think that I would ask somebody to do something that I'm not even willing to do and complete myself. Totally. Um, and on, in terms of showing up, um, I was paid a huge compliment indirectly uh, with my son who's uh, embarked upon soccer the last two seasons, first time playing, even though he's eight, you know, a lot of kids started four or five years old, but he wasn't really interested. And he's playing in this program, this developmental program, in which it's a, it's a feeder program for club soccer, so forth and so on. Well, he just finished the developmental program, and he, we got a, got a phone call from the guys in charge of the program. And, um, and I, I totally get this. I didn't get my ego blown up too big. Um, but he, uh, you know, my son's been asked to try out for one of their club teams. And I, and I, I, I am a very realistic when it comes to athletics and sports, I played at a high level baseball and I've coached baseball in the past in sports. And I, I feel like I can disconnect. And even for my own kids, my yeah. son is not a great soccer player. He does a few things really well. And I even told the guy this, he's saying, Oh, we don't come. I'm thinking to myself, you just want my money because it costs more money to play <laughs> in this program. I get it. You've got, it's, you've got sale quotas to me and you got to fill these spots. <laughs> the entrepreneur in you. <laughs> and I, yeah, exactly. And I told him, I go, you know, I know my, my, my son's got some things he does pretty well, but I just don't know. I don't think he's good enough to play at that level. And he told me, he goes, I go, his ball skills aren't that great. Um, you know, this and that, that I don't think he does all that well compared to some of the other kids. And he goes, uh, Mr. Schlank, the one, the three things that we cannot teach are effort and hustle, or I'm sorry, effort and hustle is one. And then um, listening to the coach and being yeah. a good teammate and being excited for your teammates. He goes, your son does all three of those things. And That's I'm like, cool. yeah, he does do those really well. He enjoys the aspect of helping his team. Um, he does listen very well and even though he may not be very good, he does not quit. Yeah. And I'm like, huh, oh, I'm succeeding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Succeeding at least one aspect of the, you know, those traits are coming through on my, on my son. So 
anyway, we'll be trying out next week. <laughs> That's cool. That's we'll cool. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, you know, there, there was, there was Kobe Bryant, right. And love him or hate him. He was Kobe like, and he could play and he was always there early, always staying late and always just shooting and just practicing and just like the best. But then who did you really enjoy back in those Laker days watching was Shaq? Like he'd be dancing and doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Right. And he made the team but he listened to the coach. He went for the feeling and that brought so much to it. So it's, it's that perfect balance, still a great player in his own yeah. right, in his own ways, but then come free for the line. Like there's, so there's always going to be things. And yeah. it kind of reminds me of that, you know, and, and I've had the pleasure of running the strength and conditioning for a basketball high school team out here. And <clears throat> one of the things I do at the, uh, towards the end of almost every session uh, is, is I'll, I'll just say like, I need a leader. And for the first three weeks, right? The, uh, the varsity captain would always just immediately step up. Right. And then finally I just gave a speech. I'm like, Hey, you all lead in different ways. Like the person in the back of the pack is leading to make sure that no one is falling behind. The person in the middle is leading to make sure that they're not letting the tempo of the ones in the front go too fast. The tempo of the ones behind go too slow. You are all leaders, whether you're quiet, silent, loud, whatever, stepping up. So when I say I need a leader, everybody should raise their hand because, you know, and, and it's one of those things. Like, I think we just need to start to recognize that we all have the capacity, like you leading by doing 75 hard and posting this stuff, leading by, you know, encouraging your son, leading by challenging the coach, him leading by opening, you know, your eyes to the other side of what he needs for his team, which you already saw those things in your son, but it's right. It's just cool stuff, man. Like, and it was interesting how the the things he pointed out that he does well, that didn't involve a a ball. Yeah. um, I take for granted because it's expected. I expected of myself. I expected of my kids. I mean, I, I've told them for a while. So when I, when I told my son when he got home from school that I got a call from so-and-so, the program, and uh, he was really excited. And I go, do you know why he wants you to try out? And he thought, because he even thought he, he even has this innate awareness of, I'm not really that good. <laughs> I, I only do a few things pretty well. He goes, um, because I hustle? I go, that's one reason. He goes, um, Cause I listen, I go, that's the other one. And the other one he didn't, doesn't realize cause he just does it cause it's his personality. He goes, cause you're a good teammate. You cheer yeah. your, your team on, you talk, communicate. Cause at that level, if you, if you know anybody's listening, knows anything about soccer, soccer's turns into soccer when there's communication and you're calling 100%. for the ball and you know, you're, you're telling someone to cover so-and-so and do this aspect of the game when there's that conversation within the game. And my son does that. A lot of times it's wrong, but at least he's trying. <laughs> yeah, and that can that piece can be learned. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and that's what the coach said. He goes, I can teach him ball skills. I can teach him other things, but those other three things we can't teach, and we wish other kids did that, those things better. So, yeah. you know, a lot of what I coach within the gym that I own and operate and within my coaching programs are – it doesn't take any talent to just – show up to show up first for yourself to show up for your family and then you know showing up at your job it doesn't take any talent you can bitch and hate your job till you're blue in the face but it doesn't make it any better or more enjoyable but if you just show up and do what's required you get through the day the day's complete before you know it then yeah. you can show up show up you know better for your family because you've actually put in a good hard day of work and integrity and hopefully before all of that, you've already shown up for yourself and, and you've trained yourself, body and mind. Um, but just showing up, it doesn't, it doesn't require anything. It doesn't it's, even require what's on my, on my shirt. You don't even have to hustle. If you just show up, that's it. Yeah, uh, so spot on. And yeah, it's the, the awareness that, you know, if we show up, we, <laughs> we're going to be more successful and happier than we ever thought possible you know and i just yeah. absolutely love that absolutely love that so we could go down like so many different paths um <clears throat> but you know how i, I just kind of want to know like you're, you're so key about making things simple for your members to be successful um so there's got to be a few key highlights that you make sure to teach that i mean we've had two of your uh your your um, people from your gym come on the podcast cause they've right. lost so much weight and kept it off and still going for years and years. Um, and that's just, you know, a tiny, tiny little scope and fraction, um, cause you're so good at what you do. So what are some of the simple things that you're making sure you teach that is really ingrained with them, 
um, not from the strength training or the nutrition side, but from the life side, because we know that it is an identity shift. It is facing those fears. It is making simple habits. Um, so I, I kind of want to know just your insight on a key few things that you're doing, which is why you have right. so many successful transformations. Right. Yeah. With a lot of people, we start off with transformation wise, whether it be in the gym or um, uh, online with coaching. Um, and I'm sure you've had plenty of people talk about this and I'm sure, I'm sure you talk about this, you're blue in the face, but setting up a number one, just the environment that you want to, you want to try to take on this challenge. Your, the environment has to be something of, um, I don't want to use the word motivation because that's not it, but it has to make things simpler. So if you're trying to lose weight, if you're going to rely on, I'm just not going to go into the, ref the freezer where the ice cream is, you know, that's not going to make it simple for you to lose weight, you know, creating that environment. Um, I've turned a lot of people away from my gym because they told me where they're driving from. And I just know it's too long of a distance. It's not going to be convenient. It's not going to be easy. And they might stick it out for a little while with us, but they probably won't long-term and that's not going to benefit them. Yeah. So, creating an environment of, you know, where you're going to train, how you're going to prep your food, how you're going to get up in the morning, you know, just making sure those things are easy. We have to have as little resistance as possible when, when embarking upon a transformation. And then from there, do things you do well, not things you don't do well. Don't harp on the things. Well, I, I don't know how to cook. All right, cool. Do you know how to, um, order food from, uh, you know, a meal service and order five lunches a week. Can you do yeah. that? That's pretty easy. Cool. You just made one of your meals easier that week. Um, you know, I don't know how to lift weights. No big deal. Do you know how to walk? <laughs> okay. Um, break it down to things that you're really good at and then build some uh, momentum with those things. And I, I usually don't have people start with more than four things. And it's not even like four different types of workouts and all this stuff. It's like just four simple things like um, lay your clothes out in the night before that you're going to get up, wake up and go to the gym in, or go for a walk in. Um, just drink water, nothing else. Don't make it challenging for yourself. Make it easy that just tell yourself, I'm just going to drink water for this first week. It's water. Um, I'm going to go to bed and make sure I get at least six hours of sleep. A lot of those things are the things that really start to build momentum and start to make you feel better and start to increase your energy. Yeah. And what I found with most people starting out on a transformation is their mind and their motivation is a five gallon bucket. They're ready to take on the world, but their actual capacity to actually take on a transformation is about a five ounce Dixie cup. <laughs> and that's okay. So we try to pull people back to understand that. And I use that analogy a lot. You have a five ounce Dixie cup to fit into your life. Now, you know, these habit changes that you're going to need long-term. Okay. So what are one or two habits that can fit in that five ounce Dixie cup? That's going to help us get to a seven ounce Dixie cup by next week. And maybe 10 ounces two weeks after that, maybe we get up to, you know, a 10 out, you know, a, a half a liter, you know, and the, the cup of capacity gets a little bit bigger and bigger. What I learned with the 75 hard, 75 hard challenges is I had a, I had a pretty big cup. I take on a lot of things. And I do a lot of different um, activities each day with business and family and myself, but I didn't really have a big enough cup to, for 75 hard. I had to grow, but I'm starting from a, 50 gallon drum. Right. And I'm trying to get to a tanker truck <laughs> of capacity. Um, and there's a lot of things that come into play and people ask me, well, what do you do daily? I'm like, I can't tell you what I do daily because it'll overwhelm you. Yeah. It's taken me, what you should ask is how long did it take me to get there? 30 years. I've been taking care of my body in, in terms of fitness for 30 years since I was 13 years old. That's why I'm at where I'm at. But where you are right now is you're at a five ounce Dixie cup. We just need to get a little bit bigger by next week and yeah. a little bit bigger by the week after that. So what are the simplest things that make you feel better to give you more energy to have a bigger cup? So sleep, water, 
and the simplest movement activity you could come up with. Yeah. Even if it, even if it's only a five minute walk in your backyard or up your street, down your street, but if you do it every single day, then you're going to say, well, that's not bad. I bet I could probably walk five more minutes. That's how our Dixie cup gets bigger and how we continually to grow a little bit at a time. But like I said, everybody's mental motivation and where they're at is like, when they make that decision, I'm going to do this. It's this five gallon bucket. I'm going to, I'm going to do all this stuff. And if you get to a bad coach or a bad gym, they're going to hand you a laundry list of all these habits that you've got to do. You've got to clean out your freezer. You've got to clean out your pantry. You're going to have to buy all these foods. And then you've got to hit these macros. You're going to hit five workouts a week. And you're going to have to get eight hours of sleep. And da, 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 da. you're going to need to meditate. You're going to need to read this self-development book. This book <laughs> will change your life. And before you know it, that five-gallon bucket of motivation is now a thimble of motivation. You're like, fuck this. And then you're going to procrastinate on it. You're going to keep telling yourself, I need to do something. I need to do something. But I went to this gym and this is what this guy told me. I can't stress the importance of being with a coach who is going to set you up for success based on where the, where you are right now, not where you want to be and what's going to take to get all the way there and give you all those habits that it could take a year or two years or five years to get to where you are right now. And I yeah. do, and I work with people who are starting from nothing to starting from, Hey, I'm already 10% body fat, but here's what I want to do. Okay, cool. I can throw a lot more at that person because they've already created enough habits and their buckets are their, you know, their capacity is pretty big already, but you've got to find a coach and you've got to find a program, a gym, whatever it is, a mentor who can lead you from where you are right now to get a little bit better. I love it, man. It's so good. Um, it, it's really trying to make sure that you're not going to overwhelm yourself and a coach that is willing to be a hundred percent honest with you. I mean, the Dixie cup thing, it's like, man, that feels, feels a little harsh. You're telling me I have a five ounce Dixie cup, but when you pull me back and really evaluate life and say, this is what you have the capacity and the time for, uh, and realizing that, yeah, when I've gone after the five gallon bucket right away, I'll just repeat that cycle that hasn't served me or worked in the past. And I, greatly appreciate that you've never said once during any of that um small habits or slow and i think that's what drives me nuts is you know we understand that we need to go a pace that we can maintain in order to be able to grow and expand and continue and to develop into these newer and higher level habits and expand our dixie cup but when we put words like slow and small <laughs> it right. just like makes us feel like less than and then we want to rebel or at least i personally have find the find that for myself and you're much more about like let's meet you where you're at and let's implement strategically and i'm like oh that's just so spot on because now it feels like let's go my pace as fast as my pace can go within my capacity right. and meet me where I'm at. Cool. I respect that. I appreciate that. Right. It's not going to overwhelm me, but it's not going to underwhelm me by telling me I need to go slow and go small. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I think that's, that is good. But the fact that you're being able to be real and raw with people is, is so good too. Cause it's so sugar coated. Like, you know, yeah, sure. We'll get you where you want to be. We're just going to do this. And you're like, no, like, we can, but yeah. here's, here's the reality of where you're at. Here's the reality of what it's going to take. And, and I think that, is missing from a lot of it. And it's when people can be told the truth, fully hear the truth, accept the truth, and then start living it. That's where they start to make these shifts permanently that, that you're having. I mean, and we've seen it from the guests that you've, you've let come on uh, the show that, that you've helped, uh, you know, highlight with their transformations. So, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's really the thing you mentioned a coach that, you know, it, it takes experience and a lot of practice and a comfortableness, the coach is comfortableness with themselves to, to be real and raw with people because there's a lot of fluff going on out there. And the fluff then is backed up with uh, an empty promise of, oh, I'll get you there in eight weeks. <laughs> no doubt about it. You can accomplish a lot in eight weeks. Yeah. But what a lot of people don't understand that are embarking upon a transformation is, you know, if somebody's selling you, you know, your, your 
pinnacle in eight weeks. And you think, well, that's, that'd be great. That's fast. Um, they're not selling you on what it, that will actually take. Yeah. And that's going to, that's going to take you basically giving up everything you like right now. And yeah. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in giving up the things we like to do, whether that's binge watch Netflix every Sunday, or that means I want to have pizza once or once a week. And I want to have a dessert twice a week. You got to be able to understand that you, yeah, you can make progress and still do those things, but you're not going to hit your pinnacle in eight weeks or 12 weeks, or maybe even six months, depending on where you're starting from. And being real and raw and telling people the, the truth of the matter is, Hey, I'll, I'll help you get to where you want to get, but here's based on what you said, you're not willing to give up. This is how long it's probably going to take. Are you okay with that? Yeah. That's really, really where I think coaching really needs to be and should be, but there's a lot of insecure coaches out there that aren't uh, that are, that are struggling because they're not willing to put this in-depth conversation in play and they're just looking for some, for a payday. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I, I <clears throat> reminded of uh, that one story where, uh, you know, a son who met with his father and his father was dying on his deathbed and his father was one of the greatest swordsmen in all the land. And he said to his father, father, what can I do to honor you before you pass away? And he said, son, it's time for you to follow in my footsteps, go up the mountain across the journey and meet with my mentor and become the next greatest swordsman in all the land. And so he said, yes, father, I will. And he goes out, sets on this journey, meets with the mentor and tells his mentor that he needs him to train him and to become the greatest swordsman in all the land. <clears throat> and so the mentor agrees and he asks him, how long will it take if I do everything you say? And he said, if you do everything I say, it'll possibly take 10 years to actually be that good. And he said, well, what if I just eat, live, breathe, and sleep here and, and just do go beyond and train more than anyone. And he was like, well, in that case, it might take five years. And he was like, well, what if I just never rest and I just go all in no matter what uh, and, and just follow everything to 100% T and just sacrifice everything in my entire life, not go home at all and just be here permanently. This He's like, well, then you'll never achieve it. And he said, what? And he's like, I don't understand if I'm doing everything. He's like, well, if you're doing everything, you'll miss out on the life lessons. You'll miss out on seeing your father actually before he passes. And you'll right. actually break down and destroy yourself and not actually ever be able to achieve it. Yes, it takes buy-in. Yes, it takes a lot of effort. Yes, it takes hustle. Yes, it takes grind. But if you go too far, then you're missing out on the rest of this. And the, the, the journey is the lessons that you're going to acquire for it to actually be sustainable. And I like just everything you're saying, just trigger that. I haven't thought of that story in yeah. a long time. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe, the, maybe there's an individual out there who will meet someday who is willing to sacrifice everything else as part of life. But then I got to be honest, I don't know if I'd, I would want to work with somebody like that. That'd be pretty boring to talk to. Totally. You know, what about, what about kids? What about being a, you know, a family person? What about, you know, uh, career aspirations? Yeah. Like it's, it's the, the balance, uh, of the imbalance. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. It's, and I think, and, and, and what you say there, you know, the other, the big piece is, um, any transformation people feel like, well, I'm losing motivation. Or I'm not motivated anymore. You know, if back, back to that, that five gallon bucket of all this excitement and motivation they have. They want to jump on this. And I go back to a lot of times that we don't necessarily need motivation that actually, if we take simple action, that will create the motivation. It, it's that, that, that shift, that mental shift of action. And again, that's why I go back to giving actions to people where they are. Yeah. You know, if somebody, who hasn't worked out in their entire life and is now 35 years old and I'm telling them to go to the gym five days a week and they've never gone to the gym once. Um, that's not gonna be very motivating. No, it's gonna feel not at all. Pretty defeating. But if I give them, Hey, um, Joe, I want to go you, I want you to go and I want you to just step outside. I want you to walk five minutes that direction. I want you to walk back to your house. I want you to do that for seven days. Well, it doesn't feel threatening. Yeah. That action is going to motivate them to do it the next day because they're going to accomplish that action. Yeah. I can do this. I mean, think about anything in your life that you do and you're like, and you didn't realize you could do it and you did it. Like, boy, that was a lot easier than I thought. Yeah. 
And, and like I mentioned before, next thing you know, that person will take it upon themselves to, well, that five minute walk that way, five minute, well, I'm going to go 10 minutes that way. And then 10 minutes back. Yeah. Very easy to gauge the success on that. And that action will create the motivation to try to do a little bit better. Yeah. Good, good stuff, man. Yeah, so before okay. I ask my last question, mm-hmm. you know, where can people find you? What do you got going on? We didn't even get a chance to talk about uh, all the amazing fit dad stuff that you run. So yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Everything we just talked about is what I, what I teach anyway. Within yeah. That, so. yeah, true. Um, yeah. Online for those around the country, around the world who will be listening to this podcast and all your shows in the future. Um, you know, I'm on Instagram as fit dad underscore Doug, um, Facebook fit dad Academy or my personal page. I share a lot back and forth. Uh, the website is nearly complete. Membership site is complete. So yeah, Fit Dad Academy. That's the easiest place to find me in, in the, what I do, my, my teachings and lessons of Fit Dad. Um, and I, I love the, um, how should we say, the, the challenges I get from having that name Fit Dad because most men think it's all about fitness and I'm this big jack dude when in actuality, being fit and being a, being a fit dad has very little to do with fitness aspect it has to do with, you know, being mind and, and heart more yeah. so. So that's a lot of what I teach. It's, it's really around everything. You know, fitness is a driver, as you know, as you teach to allow for our minds to be free, um, to create some clarity, create capacity, like we've been talking about. Um, and, th- and that's what I, what I preach, you know, fitness, focus, family and fun. Yeah. So, so good. Uh, I'll definitely link up all that in the show notes. Um, and, and so yeah, definitely for, for any men, uh, but fathers specifically that are looking for ultimately a way to feel like you're connected to something. And it's not just about a life of work and sports and coming home and sedating and kind of dreading coming home and dealing with so much stress and not having a balance and feeling like you're just in this overwhelm, uh, the stuff that Doug teaches and, and um, helps you implement is very powerful. And uh, it's going to not only revitalize your energy, you know, for sure, and give you systems uh, and get your body back to where it needs to be, but also have you just organize so that you're not dealing with the chaos inside your head, not having to sedate with whatever it may be, drugs, alcohol, porn, social media, um, and, uh, and yeah, and he's going to implement some things that just revitalizes the, the marriage and connection with the kids. You actually see them, not just around them. So I, I can't plug it, highlight it enough. Um, so, and for any of our women listeners, it, you know, like seriously check it out and encourage your, your husbands and boyfriends to do so, um, because it greatly will help your relationship. I can guarantee that too. Yeah. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, I, I really just try to lead men to create that epic life that they they dreamed of having when they were before they were married and when they thought well, this is what my I want my life to be. And we never had these visions of mediocrity. So just yeah. trying to create epic like a legacy. Yeah. Them. Epic legacy. That's good. It's so true. That, that does sum up what you do. Uh, so my last question, my friend, is, yeah. what do you believe is the truth of transformation? Truth of transformation. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but it's, it's how you show up and it's, it's, it's removing that story that I'm, I'm not good enough, or I'm, I'm not, I've never been athletic or um, I'm, I'm a bad organizer and all these things we tell that, that we're bad about. Um, if you can remove one at a time and just, just show up and realize that it doesn't take any talent to, to, to show up for yourself. It doesn't take talent to make the decision of, I'm going to go to the grocery store and buy mostly good foods today instead of just all stuff from the box. Um, it doesn't take talent to put your clothes out in the morning or at night to have clothes for the morning that you're going to go for a walk. Um, it, it doesn't take any talent to reach out for help, but you know, you just have to show up. That's re- really it. And even if it's just five minutes every day to show up for yourself or show up for your family, and that was five minutes that you did more than you did the day before, that's it. Just start showing up because there, there's so many motivational people out there and so many things. And we can say that, you know, we only get one life to live and, and so forth. 
but have you ever really, really stopped and thought about that? I mean, it's, it's the story of, you know, there's a 90 year old billionaire on his deathbed and he's willing to trade places with you. You're, you're, he'll give you all your money, but you got to trade places. You know, hell no. Oh. What, what is that money going to do? Nothing. So show up for yourself, show up for your family. And before you know it, it becomes easy to show up for those times when you don't really want to. Yeah. So good. I want the shirt. Show up. <laughs> Make yeah. it. I'll buy it. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's a great point. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a tendency to wear this hustle shirt on Fridays. And there's a reason why. And uh, I, I was on a mastermind call before this. And I, and I know they're tired of seeing it. But I think a lot of people have this mindset of not showing up on for Friday. Yeah. Because Friday, it's almost the weekend. I just, I just got to make it through this eight hour work day. And I, I just really look at Fridays as an opportunity. It's one more opportunity to, to hustle, to show up and get even more stuff done to have less stuff to worry about on Monday. Yeah. Cause how many people have stress and anxiety on Sunday about what they're not prepared for or need to do on Monday? hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Good so, stuff. Good show stuff. up and while you're there, you might as well hustle. Yeah. Beautiful. Good stuff. Well, I can't uh, thank you enough for coming on, dropping amazing wisdom. So yeah, thank uh, you, Joseph. Best of it. luck with your new endeavor with Locke. I'm, I'm excited to see the journey. And I will be in Arizona in March. So we will visit. Heck yeah. That'll be good. So we'll make it happen. So Doug yeah. Schlank, thank you so much, my friend. Yeah, thank you. All right, my friends. Thanks again for listening to another great episode. Now I do have one request. If you know of someone that's got a amazing success story, or if you know of a transformational coach or transformation authority figure with insights and the lessons that need to be shared, we'd love to talk to any of these people. There's a good chance we can have them on one of the next episodes and they continue to help us all grow as we continue to unveil the truth of what it takes to truly transform. Last thing, love for you to head on over to iTunes and hit that five-star review button. Helps to get this message out and continue to transform more lives. As always, my friends, Coach Joseph Hawthorne, peace be the journey.